What's happening guys, Alex here and I'm back for another video. So of course we're now in a kind of an interesting wildcard meta and I'm going to be telling you guys my opinion on the best cards to side and main deck depending on what you play. And yeah, so let's go straight into the video. So of course, as you can see on the screen, I'm going to get Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries out of the way straight away. Now, this card is very awkward, and I think it's a very good card to side deck, depending on what you play, but at the moment, because of how many different decks there are at the moment, I just don't see the point in siding this card, especially if you're a person who plays on a lower budget, including like me. Of course, you know, cards like Electromite is not cheap to side, so of course, you know, Ghost Reaper and Winter Chair is as much of a good card it is. I don't think it is amazing to side deck, but yeah. To get that, we got that one out of the way, let's carry on. First card is of course Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Now this card of course got a reprint, not exactly the most affordable, but this card is just probably the best hand trap um, after one other, which I'll go into afterwards. But in my opinion, this is a great card to side deck in this format, considering how many searches that loads and loads of decks are creating. And, of course, you know, lots of times when you want to just say, you know, no, no, no more adding to your hand, no more sending to the graveyard. It's really, really important, especially when you're against stuff like 60 card decks and loads of 60 card decks in this format that we're in. You're abusing cards like Coatlas that are sending, um, that are adding alt, alt, uh, double evolution pill to their hand. And that card is very, very powerful. So, of course, Ash Blossom is one of the best hand traps to play if not the best but yeah in my opinion in this format it is not the best but that's just my opinion but i think this is a great card to main deck or side deck depending on what deck you are playing next one is of course the almighty ghost ogre my opinion the best hand trap to play in this format and the reason for why that is is because of the amount of pendulum players they are, are that are playing and of course um, Ghost Ogre versus Electromite, Ghost Ogre will win because of course Electromite will come out, activate its effect, Ghost Ogre and Electromite is gone. The card is extremely extremely powerful in this format and I think it's going to go into a stage with hand traps where it's just going to be flipping over which one's top priority. So I think Ghost Ogre in this case uh, where we are right now, Ghost Ogre is probably the most important hand trap that the the game has uh, because of the meta that we're in but of course things can change. Next up is number 41 Baguska. Baguska is a very awkward card but very annoying to play against which is why it is here. See loads of times when you brick uh, you don't really have much of an op option to do so you'll be like oh I don't know what to do what should I do should I uh, Search this, well I can't really brick, I've bricked a lot, so you know, if you're playing cut decks that require a lot of level 4 cards, there is no reason why you should not play number 41 Baguska. This card is amazing for stalling games, you can stall for about 2 turns unless your opponent has a way to get rid of it. It's an amazing card, it's very frustrating to play against, and that's the whole reason why it's on here. If you need to stall the game a bit, so you can, you know, actually draw some decent cards, then yeah, Baguska's your way to go, and I think this card just to main deck is so so important in the current format that we are in. Next card is the Kaiju package. Well, I just put Slumber on here, but I'm just talking about Kaijus in general. Kaijus are of course at the probably one of the best things that Konami have created. Of course, interrupted Kaiju Slumber is pretty overpowered, but the the card is the cards are really really good, especially considering True Draco have came back. These cards, this card is these cards are very very powerful, and you know this is oh, the ways that you get rid of the cards, like getting rid of them with um, getting rid of boss monsters like Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, um, Cyframe Lord Omega, and even you know tr uh, Masterpiece is just really good, and Kaiju's really do help you a lot. And I think the Kaiju package is just so, so good for this format. And yeah, so let's carry on. Next up is Droll and Lockbird. Personally, my favourite hand trap at the moment. The reason why I like Droll and Lockbird so much is because it can stall your opponent and make them just stop playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a bit. Now this is basically, in my opinion, reverse Maxi. It's just, you know what, you've had your search, 
no more searching for you, no more adding cards to your hand. And that's one thing I can I like about this card is it forces your opponent to use resources, then you activate it, and then it's just like, well, I can't carry on with my big board because I can't search anything anymore. So you know, it's such a good card to have. I mean, it's not good in True Draco because a lot of time True Draco like to play during your turn as well and searching. And don't forget, like it's either player can't add cards to their hand. So if you activate Draw and Lockbird, Ignis Heat's effect won't really go off. And it just turns into a bricky card. But in every other deck, I think this is such a good card. Especially if you're playing cards, uh, decks like Dinos. Because don't forget, like Double Evolution Pill requires a monster that's not a Dino. And Draw and Lockbird is a, is a, spell, is, um, a spellcaster. So it just really does benefit these decks as well. So that is why I put Draw and Lockbird here. Next card is Twin Twisters, and with Pendulum coming back and loads of different variations of uh, Pendulum, Twin Twisters is just an amazing card to have in your deck or side deck because, of course, back row is insanely power, um, important in the current format that we're in. So, yeah, I put Twin Twisters here because I feel that destroying uh, Pendulum scales um, just really stalls the game and makes your opponent just think, well, my Pendulum scale's gone. Or well, it's either I put another card down in my pendulum scale and waste one resource that I was going to pendulum summon, or no pendulum summon, summoning for me. And, you know, that's the whole reason why I think Twin Twisters is actually starting to make a comeback. You might not think about it, but after looking at all the um, the deck profiles that people have created who went to YCS, I think, tw and seeing Twin Twisters side decked and even main decked, I think this card is so important for the game. Next up is Tornado Dragon. Very similar to um, to Twin Twisters, it plays during your opponent's turn as well as yours. It's a great rank for a generic staple card that every single deck, in my opinion, should run. That it has is able to use um, level four uh, monsters, and it's just really, really powerful. Set destroying set um, uh, the set or uh, face up spell or trap card during your yours or your opponent's turn is just really really effective and I think in the format that we're in this card is just too good to not uh, main deck next up is anti spell fragrance again the anti pendulum card and the anti I say true draco card this card is a pain in the ass to deal with and of course with loads of decks in the and at the moment really requiring on spell and trap cards this is a great way to stall it. Spent anti-spell just basically says no diagram, no spiral resort, nothing that can search 24/7. It stalls the game and it's just a really, really frustrating card to play against. So it's like you make a huge board, activate fragrance during your opponent's turn, and GG. The final card we're going to be talking about is Denko Seca. Now this is a very awkward card to talk about because people might be thinking oh why would you play Denko Seca now hear me out at the moment I play this card against Trickstars for a reason now when you play against Trickstars the whole thing that Trickstars do is they um, they're not really like an attacking based uh, deck they're not exactly you know one of those OTK decks like Dinos they don't summon out like huge massive monsters on the field Denko Seca pauses the game completely when it's summoned. Unless your opponent has a way of just destroying it completely, it's just going to stay there and your opponent can't really activate or set Trickstar Reincarnation because, of course, um, you know they have face-down cards. This card is really, really frustrating to play against. And I think that against Trickstars, this is a very, very, very underestimated card to use. Anyway, that is it for this list. If you enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below on what you think that I missed out or what you think about the list that I made. Anyway, my name is Alex and I'll speak to you guys later. Au revoir.